Uh, the exhibition with Mayor Helen Sibiri was in uh, 2016, but the conversation sort of began in early uh, 2015, and the idea was to invite her to Michaelis um, for some workshops and work with um, having a generational conversation with students in the painting department. Um, but she couldn't make it in 2015 because she was working on a new body of work, and um, so we moved it for 2016 and in that period we decided that we'd also then have this exhibition at Michaela. So the exhibition was not so much a retrospective as much as it was a presentation of new work that she had made um, between then 2014 and, and 16. Um, yeah, and so by the time that we had the exhibition, it was in the middle of the student protest, so the exhibition technically never opened. And, <laughs> and uh, so she so also never arrived um, at the time, so it was the exhibition that never opened, really. So what we were then able to do is like, okay, so we'll uh, maintain the conversation. And so uh, uh, earlier this year, was it a month, two months ago, she eventually was able to make it, but also it was in tangent to an exhibition that she was having at the Novo Foundation with Portia, um, which was more retrospective in, in, in dimension. And then we were able to have the conversations and the workshops with the students. Uh, but in, in arriving and sort of trying to then write about the exhibition that didn't happen in relation to Mayor Helen's um, practice and sort of the way that her career has sort of developed over the years, what's generally been happening is that she would make work and the work would go to the gallery and be for sale, but it sort of is never um, goes anywhere else. You know? So beyond the commercial, she, she was technically not very much, uh, her work was not engaged in more critical ways and um, in trying to find um, what's written on her is, has a very uh, biographical um, focus that doesn't really touch on what she's doing with her work. And so when the exhibition did not work out so well, so I started working on a paper that was to then contextualize her practice and and um, and her paintings and what she attempts to do in that, and that then became those of the part of the um, the basis of the workshops, and um, so we're trying to sustain an, an ongoing conversation where we will work on a, <laughs> an exhibition that uh, it will be um, maybe a larger retrospective, but it's, it's it's in the future. So that was that, Charmaine. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'll speak about mine, um, the one I had at Stivico. Um, it's called Zundi Ondisise, which basically is like a sassy way of saying you know who I am. Um, so the exhibition really started out from my um, obsession with um, a poet, Nunzi Zunguato, who was um, a poet um, during the 1920s, and she was she's the first woman to publish poetry in Isitkasa, um, in a newspaper. And how that came about was, um, she calls herself Imbongi, but um, she's from a Tamaha in the Eastern Cape. But because um, Imbongi, Imbongi is a performing poet, so um, who, who, who is allowed to call people out on, on whatever and not be reprimanded. And so she was, a, <laughs> she's, she, <laughs> her being a woman, um, she was not allowed to be in Bongi, so um, I'm thinking because she was friends with Charlotte Matraike, whose husband had a newspaper, she was like, okay, I can do this through the newspaper in, and not be reprimanded. So she became an Imbongi through a newspaper, which I found extraordinary because she can still call people out and still do what she was not allowed to do in the Eastern Cape through a newspaper and still um, get what she wanted, um, you know. Um, and and the newspaper should still call herself Imbongi just to like rub it in that, you know what, I'm doing this anyway. So, um, so I've been very obsessed with her, but also um, because I hang out with old people a lot, old ladies a lot, um, I listen to how they navigate their spaces and um, their little oppressions, like um, one lady um, having to hide money under a rock in order to educate her daughter, and um, only like three people knew about that, and this is how she basically 
was able to educate five grandchildren. Um, and so she was in, in a way like, um, well, I can't save money in the bank because it's going to be found by my husband or whoever. So I will use a rock, you know, and I will educate my children based on uh, hiding money under a rock. So um, having had these conversations with um, women in, in villages and all of that, I realized that, oh, they, they also have spaces where they work from, like art centers, um, old age homes and all of that, and they work with beads. So I realized that, you know, we could have these conversations and these stories and um, which we are not allowed, um, we don't have the spaces to talk about at. Um, so use our beads, our art in expressing what we wanted to express, like Kunun um, Sisi, in our own way um, and be killjoys in different ways, right? So then take the beads and turn it into something else that will question, that will... Um, disrupt and, 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 and still, you know, be in the same spaces that they work at. And so Uzo Ndipon says I came from um, basically having conversations with women and then having a platform where we can actually um, open these conversations to other people that will come and, and, and listen um, and um, yeah and then perform the beats or whatever in whatever way that they wanted to do it um, without having that whole cloud hanging over you that you are not allowed to do this because you are in this space and you're not, you're not allowed to say this because you're in a marginal state right so um, yeah it came from that and, and yeah that was the exhibition. So, I mean, do you consider yourself a bit of an Mbongi? <laughs> do you consider yourself a bit of an Mbongi? Well, in a sense, probably, because I try and find ways to do what I want. <laughs> um, yeah, I, yeah I, I think I would, because I do think that I do have that trickster thing in me where... <laughs> Where if I'm not allowed to do this, then I'll find a way to do it. Like Kunun I mean, if you say you're not allowed, I'm going to find a way to do it, even if it's discreet. But <laughs> I will, I will find some way of voicing out what I do want to voice out in in whatever way that I find, um, yeah, appropriate.